Here we go. Kalimera, Kalispera, wherever time you're watching, this is MAPA. This episode is brought to you by Project 357. So if you can get your car customized in Cyprus, that's your place to go. Now, you know who I am, and you should know who this guy is, especially Ayer fans. This guy has played all over the world, all over the world. I'll tell you what, he's probably got more air miles than most pilots, to be honest. <laughs> but um, <laughs> he's, a, he's a good friend. Um, we're kind of family now, Bratty. We're kind of family, you know. I, I know Marco well. I know you well now. Sure. How are you doing, Stefan? You good? All good, all good, man. All good, yeah. Yeah, just uh, had a dinner and that's it, yeah. Now, now you're going to fall asleep. You've just eaten and I'm going to send you to sleep. Nah. <laughs> I'm full, of, I'm full of energy now, so that, that's it. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Well, bro, first of all, thank you for, for joining me on this pod. Um, it's, it's an absolute My honor to have you on. Um, and yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about your career, man, because you've been a lot of places, man. You've been a lot of places. Um, let, let's start from the beginning. Obviously, you're from Serbia. You played for a few teams before ending up in, in Sampdoria for a bit. Can you tell us a bit about your, your upbringing playing football as a, as a youngster? Yeah, first of all, uh, we started to play in Spain, you know, um, me and my brother, um, because my father was playing there. Uh, so both of us, we, we started playing in, uh, in Spain. In that time, uh, I was uh, six and a half. Marco was uh, five, maybe a little bit some months more than, than, than five, but something like that. So, yeah. We start. We started playing there uh, in Spain. They, in that time, usually they, they were they had this uh, system of playing like four years indoor football. Then uh, you got play like uh, two to three years uh, seven plus one, like on the half half pitch, and uh, actually from one <clears throat> uh, line to the other line on the half pitch, like wide side, you know. So. Uh, yeah, uh, then after my father, he, he stopped uh, playing football and then we came back to, to Serbia and we started playing in the Partizan Academy. So, in case people don't know, your dad is a legend uh, in, in Serbian football. Um, you know, your, your surname holds so much weight. But I, I know from, from what I understand... One of the things that you told me, your dad isn't that guy that puts pressure on his kids. So when you guys became pro footballers, did you guys feel any pressure? Not because, not from your dad, but as because of the name. Do you guys feel any pressure then? Yeah, first of all, yeah, my father. He's uh, yeah, and I think also people in Cyprus they know him because he was four years playing there. Uh, so yeah, um, honestly, from him we never we never had something like. Uh, you must do this, you must uh, make the things like this. So he was a kind of, uh, of a guy that he said once to us something, like in the beginning of uh, our, let's say, uh, professional uh, starting career. So, and uh, then after he said, like, everything is your choice and uh, you can do how, however you think, however you feel. So that, 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 that was like that. But honestly, yeah, in Serbia, it's not only the 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 Marco and me. There are other players also that uh, that their fathers also they were they were famous football players. So it's not easy. It's not easy. But I mean, like in one moment of 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 the career, you need to disconnect from that because uh, it's not good. You know. I mean, like everyone we talk, but in the end, how I said always, I think. <laughs> My father, he cannot play in, in steps of, of us in the pitch. So even uh, even uh, I think we proved that because we we played in many many teams and uh, actually we scored everywhere that we played. So pressure, yeah, because he was uh, he was the guy who who was the like let's say the first Chepovic in the in the you know in, the, in football. Um, so you know everyone in the beginning was seeing us through him. You know. Like yeah, they're they're the sons of uh, of of, uh, of Slajan, you know. Uh, for sure, they're there because uh, the father he he put them there. Yeah. Some this, but actually, I think if I remember good, uh, he, I know me. Uh, he watched me maybe 
once or twice in the in the youth. He he he, he was never coming to the games. He was uh, he had also his his um, team because he was coaching the the ninety two um, uh, players born in the ninety two. So he took yeah. them uh, from the beginning and until the I think. Uh, 17 years old or 18 so until the first team before the first team so yeah it was a kind of pressure but i i mean like in one moment uh, you know you need to you need to live with that because it's i think uh, all the all the players that they have the same um, same thing like mark and me they will say the same thing for for sure yeah i, I remember talking to my friend fedi and fedi is the son of ozzy Ardiles who, as you know, was a very successful footballer. Yeah. And you, he told me the story that when he was playing football as a kid, his dad would go to matches, but he wouldn't tell him that he's there and he'd hide because he didn't want his son to feel the pressure of him being there. But I guess with your dad constantly involved in football, yeah. I'm assuming it was at Partizan, you, you couldn't get that disconnect from his, his physically being there. But the fact is, your your mental state focuses on what's on the pitch, and that's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, I think there are cases like that also. I know even even uh, guys that were playing with me in the team that their parents, I mean, they know they don't know nothing about football. I mean, like first time they were watching their son playing there, and uh, some of them they, they they said to to their parents to don't come to the games because uh, you know. I think the parents they need to know that in the end you cannot push the kid to do and to see through him like some uh, success you know like success you know like uh, yeah. uh, can make fortune because he will play football you know I think in the in the young age you need just to to leave to leave the kids to enjoy because in the young age it's a game it's like it's like as we I play, play computer, yeah. the arts yeah. on the streets it's just it's just to enjoy with your friends you know it's just to go to the train to enjoy to don't feel the pressure and in the end of course when you turn some age the kids they like to compete between between them so in the end you know you you compete every training every game you don't need any extra pressure on your on your shoulders because you in the end you in the end of the day you're you're a young guy you're a kid you know so you just need to go to the training and be happy yeah, and I think it's it's not just the same in, in Serbia, it's the same in most countries, in all fairness. England and Cyprus, as you're probably aware, a lot of parents are, are very pushy. Uh, they think that their children are the best in the world ever, but it's all about them taking a step back and let the coaches do their jobs. That's what coaches are there for. You yeah. know? Um, but talk to me about Partizan's Academy, because they've produced so many world-class players over the year. I don't think there's a secret when it comes to producing players. I think it's all about hard work and effort. But we've seen many of the Balkan nations produce so many talented players. So in terms of the, the coaching methods, was it like you said, where the younger co the coaches for the younger kid would just let them play? But when they get to the age of, say, I don't know, 15, 16, they need to learn more about technique, tactics. And, and as they get older, they learn more about the game. Uh, you know... Uh, I, will, I will start from the from the from the last thing that you that you said. I think in the end, uh, uh, how to say, you are, when you are young, you are starting to play football. Now I think what what the the mistakes that they are doing, many coaches, they are searching results. You cannot put what, this is what I said before pressure. You cannot learn or teach. Especially the, the the players, the young the young uh, kids, they cannot learn. I don't know. Uh, we play four four two, and uh, you know we play this tactic, and they are they are they are kids. That you cannot, you know, just leave them to play. They will compete yeah. on the pitch by themselves. They will they will they will not think about uh, I need to move there or there. And of course, in the end, they want to win the game. You know, you cannot. Put as a coach to them pressure. You need to win. You need to win. Uh, I can tell you the the uh, my father how how he was doing when he was coaching because he was a coach in the academy. He never did, did that, and I think not because it's my father. I think also other academies 
like Ajax, uh, Barcelona, the kids, when they come in cer- certain age, they know already what this means, you know, like what they're wearing, which shirt. So you don't need to say to them, I'll go out and win. You know, they, they know about that. It's, 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 you don't need to put pressure on them to this yet. It's just, first of all, for them, you are kind of father because, you know, this is the first thing. And then after the other things, because they need to feel this, I think, the love from the, from the coach to, to, be, to feel nice on the, on the training, on the, on the game, you know. And the Partizan Academy was many, many, many years. Even, even now, okay, maybe a little bit less because of the situation in the club, which is not the best one. And hopefully it will change because all the people we love the parties and we're hoping that that will change. But I think before we had some uh, kind of, um, let's say, uh, okay, uh, it's like this, we need to make this, it, you know. And all the coaches before were ex-players from the club. So they know yeah. about the club. But now, that's why I said hopefully it will change now. There is only one guy who played in Partizan and who played football. Even Partizan is making mistake now about that. So, I think first of all, these coaches, they, they, I don't say not every ex-player want to be a coach or something in football, but let's say from, I don't know, 500 ex-players from Partizan, for sure 10 they want to be coaches, minimum. So. I don't understand why they're pushing them out from the club. They're not giving them, they're bringing their own kind of, uh, let's say, okay, this is my guy, I will bring him, you know, I'm a director of the, of the academy, I will bring this because it's a friend of the friend, you know, or something like this. And in the end, we cannot accept that, you know, me that I'm from the academy, uh, Marco, I don't know, many players, which we are not now in partisan we played in partisan and in the academy of partisan for us it for us it's like we are feeling really bad about the situation you know but actually partisan in one moment now maybe not because of this situation but if you see how many players get out of the academy to the first team and make something in europe or anywhere in the world but especially in the top five leagues in Europe, it's like huge amount of players. And in the first 10, like top 10 leagues in Europe, probably, I don't know how much, but like in one moment, we were in the same level, first and second place with Ajax, because Ajax, you know, the Ajax have really good schools, yeah. uh, how they make uh, all the things, you know. So there is not, there is no a secret. I think it's this part of Europe, Balkan, I don't know, ex-Yugoslavia. I think we are talented for sports. We have, uh, we have that in the, in, the, in the blood, you know. So it's just to give the way to the kids, you know, just give the way and they will find the loan. You don't need to put the pressure on them. That, I think that's, that's, that's the thing. So I remember my, my, my year in the, in the first team of Partizan, it was... 15 or 16 players from the academy from 25 in the squad. So it was well, like... But how, many, how many of them went on to move to different clubs or, or are still playing? Look, uh, Marco, Mitrovic, yeah. me, uh, uh, I, I'm telling the names uh, who you know, um, who was more. Uh, Would you say most of them went on to have a, a professional career? Uh, yeah, I think yes. Yes. Yeah. Many of them. Maybe uh, I'm saying like professional career, like I say always, they leave from that. They leave from football. They right. earn to leave from that, you know? So. I think probably all of them. Right, okay. All of them. Because some of them, they were um, older than me, maybe a couple of years. Some of them younger. So, Lazar Markovic was there also. Yeah. 
So it was at Liverpool at one point, wasn't it? In Benfica, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had like really good connection between us because we know the club. Yeah, we feel the shirt. You know, like we know what is what is to work to wear that shirt. You know, I don't have. Yeah. I, I'm a foreigner also in other countries, and I play for other teams also. But these clubs that that usually they leave from the academy and youth. Uh, not, I think any foreigner cannot feel that feeling, like guys from the from the from the youth from the academy. You know what I mean? Like, let's say you yeah, play for you've, you've got that you know, got that emotional investment in the club because you've yeah. been from the yeah. Because in the end, okay, Partizan leave from sell, selling uh, from selling player, players abroad because of the you know like this is the the motto of the of the, of the club you know. It's a big club. It's with the rest are the biggest club in, in in the country, but I think I'm not saying because I'm a foreigner also playing outside. So, but that's why when we go out to other countries to play, we get involved really fast to the to, to the club and to the history. And I play the same with the same passion if I'm playing here or there. Of course, I, I feel more the shirt of Partizan because I, I grew up in Partizan. I'm, you know, I'm a kid from Partizan. But I will play the same for... I will give everything for IL or for or, or here. You know, it's like... This is, the, this is the thing why we have this. And I think in one way it's good because we don't want to lose. We always want to go to win, you know. This is our mentality. And I think the many coaches, they like that, okay, yeah, we have also this... Uh, uh, this blood that uh, you know we we get also sometimes in maybe with some discussions and this, but I think in football and sport is it's normal to to happen those things, you know. Yeah, I think you tend to find a lot of players that go to play for clubs abroad from outside of the countries that they're from. When they have that genuine love for that other club, it's probably due to the supporters that have immersed them in that culture. You know, um, I know that there's several players I've gone to play in Cyprus from abroad, be it from Serbia, be it from Brazil, for example, or Portugal. And they love their clubs in Cyprus because of the way that the fans have treated them. Whereas you may have other players that go to play for the same clubs and they don't have that bond with the fans and they don't have the, the love for the club and understand what it means. So I get what you're saying, but I, I do agree that you're obviously going to be more uh, motivated to play for your hometown club or the club that you went through the, the academy with because yeah. you've been there from the start. It's in your DNA. So I, I completely get it. But I, I see that you spent some time at Sampdoria when you were about 18, 19 years old. Is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was I was there. Actually, uh, I I should stay there. But because when they, when I went on loan there, I went for, uh, for half a year there. Um, uh, I was training every day with the first team. Actually, in that time, in the first team was uh, from strikers, like two strikers. There, were, um, Antonio Cassano. Cassano, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, Pazzini. Yep, Pazzini. Yep. Yeah, for me, it was like you know, I was watching them on the TV, you know, and I came <laughs> dressing room with them, you know, like, I was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> can't believe it. <laughs> I'm, I'm dreaming something over, like you know, <laughs> like. It it was a nice experience for me, like, uh, and uh, I should stay there. But then the club, um, they had the, in the contract that if they buy me for for some amount, uh, if they give that amount, that I'm completely player of Sampdoria. But then because I played really good, actually I played two two games for the first team, and then. Um, uh, I did all the games for Primavera, which is like a second team. Yeah, yeah. Ori was the top scorer of the of the of the league, and uh, yeah. And then my club they wanted more money, uh, you know, and they yeah. just uh, they just uh, yeah they just stepped on the side and they didn't they didn't want to make it because you know in the contract was saying one one amount they wanted after more so. Yeah, and uh, when you said like that, when you were joking about the miles that that I had, like uh, a lot of miles, like <laughs> for the pilot, you know, the pilots, you know, it's 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 a funny it's a funny thing, of course, but 
you know, in football, uh, it's it's not a difficult, it's not easy world. You know, it's it's a difficult yeah. world. People think, yeah, they uh, they live a nice nice life. You know, they they have all the all the things they want, but there are many things that I think ninety five percent of people they don't know what's going on behind the behind the scenes. You know, so in the beginning, you know. You're a kid. You believe in the in the people that you, you are working with them, you know. And that's why, honestly, I was changing clubs and uh, countries because I had many many good seasons. Even even though in one moment I, I wanted to stay in, in some of those teams, but you know, when the agent come to you, you are young and he say, "Hey, I have a better option for you. I think it will be better then." Then you believe in 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 that, you know, and then you you prove it. Then you again in that club, again from the start, and you make good result again. And then you change again, you know, and then when you when you get older and more experienced, then you realize why they were making that, you know, because obviously it was good for them, not for for me or for any player that you know. So that's that's why I was I was changing people. They ask me sometimes. Because normally, you know, why you change the clubs? Uh, I don't know one year in one one season after one season. Honestly, I, uh, for example, my first year in Sporting, Gijón in 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 Spain, I had uh, excellent season, and uh, we didn't have a luck to go up to the first league. We lose in the playoffs, and uh, I, I was really I was really feeling good there, you know, and. Uh, in the beginning of everything, when the season uh, was done, I said to them, "I feel good here. I, I don't have rush to to change immediately the club, you know." And uh, yeah, uh, the the time was passing and everything, and uh, I was just uh, in in the newspaper. These things, uh, the agent, one things, you know, one thing saying, the other one saying one thing. I don't know. So it was difficult for me. And then came up the the option from Celtic. Uh, which was uh, also a good option for the club because of the of the of the transfer transfer that they get. For me, it was uh, was an you know like a club as a Celtic coming uh, after you, you know, a massive club, uh, massive uh, uh, fans behind, you know, like. Uh, but of course, the things was the thing was that. I came the last day of the transfer window, so I didn't have time to pass the yeah. the, the preseason with the team because of these things. What I told you before, no, I have this club. No, I, the other have one club. No, you need to go to the club to fight with the club to put down the 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 transfer because the other club cannot pay that amount of money. And then in one moment I said, guys, but you are the agents. You are the agency. Yeah. I cannot go and fight with the club. I'm a player. I don't want this to me because, uh, you know, in life, in football, you never know. Maybe you go back to this club. You need to be nice to these people, you know. And actually happened that I came back after to Sporting. So, you know, I think it, many, like as, as I said, 95% of people, they don't know what's going on behind the scenes in football. So, it's no, uh, of course not. And about that, you know, it's like, and I think this is the problem that many, many supporters don't understand. Um, and by that, I mean, it isn't just the, the agents. It, it isn't just the clubs playing games against each other. It's the player that has to leave a different country to go to a new country, might not know the language. They might be leaving their family behind. And, you know, you and I, we've spoken about this before, and I know myself, other footballers who have left their, their home country, left their families behind and gone to the other side of the world to play football and haven't spent any time with their families. So they miss birthdays, they miss Christmas, they miss all these events, which you're not going to get that time back. And I understand it's the footballer's dream to play, but at the same time, you're making the ultimate sacrifice. And yeah. you, know, you know what they say about time? It's the most valuable currency because with money you can lose it but you can make it back with time when it's gone it's gone so again i think it's very easy for fans to say oh well you know he's earning so so much money but at the same time i'm sure most footballers would say i'll give that money back if i could go back in time and spend it with with my family there's the thing you know like 
I say like we are blessed that that we can we can work in the thing that we love. So we love playing football because many many people they make universities. I don't know many things, and they they end end up working in other thing. You know, not in the one that they study about. So in this way, we are really really luck, lucky that we we play football, we work, and we play what what we really love. So that's that, that's the one thing. But then, when you are young, we go back in the in, in the, again in the young young age. Man, I I didn't go to the excursions with the, with the school, man. I never went. In on on one, I don't know what is that, because I was training games, football, preseason. I didn't have that, you know. And this is the thing that you cannot buy. That is that is gone. You cannot go back and be again twelve years old, fourteen, and go with your with the, your friends from the school five days yeah. away from your family, you know? Yeah, I understand. I understand it is. That, you know? Uh, and I don't say, I'm not now saying this, uh, we are crying, no, football is really difficult. No, there are other jobs much more difficult than football, for sure. But what I don't like when the people, they talk like, ah, these basketball, football players, uh, I don't know, all the other sports, ah, they, they feel so much, it's so easy for them training only two and a half, three hours a day. It's not two and a half, three hours a day. You go there in the morning and you go out. Uh, I don't, I remember in Celtic, the training was 10. You need to be nine there. Nobody is coming nine. Everybody's coming before. You have a breakfast there. You finish the training, let's say around 12. You have a gym after. And after that, you have a lunch. So I was leaving every day Lennox Town. I don't know, two thirty or three o'clock sometimes, and you come at eight thirty, for example, or eight fifteen. So it's not two three hours what they're saying. That's why I say, I think they need to understand this. We are also we are not robots. We can mm -hmm. make mistakes like everyone. I I always say, me, I'm the first one when I miss a chance. I'm the first one who doesn't want to miss the chance. I want to score. Yeah. <laughs> but it can happen. Or well, the goalkeeper, when he received, I don't know, one goal between the legs, uh, wanted to, maybe he wanted to take to stop and to take the, with the hands. But oh, yeah, sometimes it happens this. Or slide, I don't know, on the pitch, the defender and the ball pass uh, through him or something like that. That's sport. Everyone has mistakes, in, not just in sport, during normal day in your life. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned the word mistakes and I, I want to bring you back to what you mentioned about uh, Cassano before because I remember Cassano is a fantastic player. He played for Real Madrid. He played for so many fantastic clubs, but it seemed that he didn't reach the levels that were expected of him. But do you think it was the expectation that put him in a difficult position? Not that he couldn't cope with the pressure, but I think people expected so much from him, especially because he was an, he was an Italian Italian player, I guess their level of expectancy is higher out there, no? Listen, I, I think his talent, it's, it's incredible. What I saw in the trainings, he will, of course, he will, he will not end uh, ending up in, in Real Madrid if, he's, if he's, he was uh, not good a player, you know. Actually, I was, uh, I was one of, he was one of the first that I was talking to him because in the beginning, my Italian obviously was not the best and he was talking Spanish because of the time in Real Madrid, he was speaking Spanish. And I was talking with him every concentration in the hotel because we were sitting in the same table and I was speaking with him in, uh, in Spanish, you know. And uh, actually he said to me that he had many mistake in, mistakes in his career. And he's uh, obviously in that time he was more more experienced player already in Sampdoria. And you could see from him that all the things, he, what he's doing, that he's doing unbelievably good, you know, like his talent was amazing. But yeah, in that time, young, young lad going to to Real Madrid, in Real Madrid, Ronaldo, the Brazilian, Robinho, Roberto Carlos, all this, you know, big, Galacticos. Big, big Galacticos. <laughs> you know, it's not easy to... 
I think probably, I don't know, maybe 85, 80% of the players, you know, their head going young there will not... That's why in football, and we're talking about football, not other sport, uh, there are, uh, let's say, Balotelli also was talented, but there are always mm. these uh, gaps between... I'm not saying that they were not top players, they were top players, Balotelli and Cassano. But making this difference between top, medium one, or, you know, it's just here. Yeah. Oh, in, in, in the, because everyone knows, knows to play football. Okay, somebody is more talented, someone less talented, someone can run more, the other one it's more but by playing technically, you know. But everything is here. That's why I say always about Messi and Ronaldo playing on that level for 20, almost 20 years. I think it's so, so, so difficult. Oh, for sure. For sure. Well, staying on Sampdoria, I know they haven't had a, a particularly good season. Stankovic is head coach. I don't know if he's going to be there next season. I remember him being at Red Star Belgrade. Right? I remember him playing for Internazionale. Um, what, I don't, do, you, do you still follow Sampdoria? And if you do, are you surprised to see the position that, they, that they've ended? Honestly, I'm trying to follow Sampdoria and those clubs that I played. Not, not all of them, obviously. The ones that that I that I love um, more than the others. I mean, in ones I was more time, in the other was I were you yeah. know younger or something like that. But Sampdoria, I liked because that's like the way they 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 support the team, and this it's closer to us, you know, because they have they have really amazing fans. The derby of Lanterna, which is uh, Sampdoria against Genoa, it's. A huge derby, maybe the most crazy there, and um, they're struggling, I think. Yeah, because going to Serie B, I don't know. Hopefully, they will get immediately back to Serie A because they they need to be in the in the top top league of Italy, not in the second one. Um, he took them in the difficult position already. It was not easy for him. He they, they were already last in the bottom of the table. So I think he didn't have that luck maybe to to get response from, from the players. Yeah. Because they were already not good, you know. So I read something that maybe he will stay for the next season there. Why not? Maybe he can try to get back with the team in the first year. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I, I want to fast forward to Celtic because you mentioned them earlier and, you know, it, being in the UK, we know all about Celtic, we know all about the rivalry with Rangers, but what do you think it is that makes Celtic such a special club? Every every player I've spoken to that's that's played for Celtic, they, they said there's something about it, but going back to what you said about the whole partisan thing, going through the being part of the DNA of the club, it, what, what is it about Celtic that is so different to, to most other clubs, if, if they are different in your perspective? I don't know, man, honestly. <laughs> I, I was I was there like just a little bit more than one year, uh, even though I signed for four years, four years deal, uh, get back to Spain. But that was maybe, I cannot say a mistake maybe, but maybe the thing that I will change, maybe... I would stay one year more. Even even the coach said to me that you know it was better maybe to change because he will not count on me that much. But I think for me it was difficult because I came from Spain to Scotland. The style of playing was different, not from Celtic but from the other teams because Celtic we wanted to play, we wanted to to propose football, but the style of the league was different, you know. So for me it was not easy, and uh, maybe if I stayed what. Well, a second second season there, uh, the whole second season there. Maybe I could I could stay longer there, you know. By that period that I was there, I don't know. I can just say all the all the best things about uh, about uh, the fans, the club, 
the organization, uh, everything, everything, everything. What what's going with the with the club? You know, I, um, we play all the games away. It's like we play at home. You know, I mean, okay, the stadiums are smaller, but it's like almost the whole the whole stadium is green. You know, <laughs> so it's like uh, you you feel that even even though the, that 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 was not let's say the the player who was playing all the games from the first 11 because actually i didn't play many games maybe seven games or eight from the first 11 i played more in europe in the first 11 than than in the pre, in the in the premiership you know because uh in europe I, I scored actually in the europa league i scored three goals in the group stage but it's it's something i don't know how to explain it's like you arrive there and from the day one you feel like one of them you know what i mean like yeah yeah you, you feel this you know you feel uh, i came to glasgow hey you cannot go to this part because it's it's a ranger spot so <laughs> you, you will you will have trouble you know then you know it's like i i think there's the team that that I would say that I don't know. Actually, I'm following every every game almost, like the result and everything. You know, like I cannot say I'm a crazy like those people that they love the club from from when they born. But you feel this, you know. You you are happy when uh, when they win the 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 old firm. You know, when when they they beat them. You know, when they. When, the, when when Celtic it's 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 first in the table, so I think it's something special. Uh, also, for sure, people from the club and the players that they are longer there, they help you to be part of 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 that faster and to to integrate it yourself faster to the to the to the to the team. I don't know what words to 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 use more about the bites. Really special. Yeah. yeah. When... Well, I, I guess you know, Postecoglou, the head coach, he's been linked with the Spurs job, and from what I understand, he doesn't want to leave Celtic because, not just because of the state that Spurs are in. Don't get me wrong, but again, it goes back to Celtic being special, and I, I can see why he would want to stay, you know, not just because of the Champions League football, not just because of the fans, but there, there's something about that club. But can you see him leaving? Why would he want to leave? Honestly, first of all, he's a coach that I think he proved that everywhere he was, he won something. Japan, Celtic, Australia, everywhere he, he was, he, his football in, in the national team of Australia was amazing also. They he always want to to play this kind of nice football to the to the eye of the fan, you know, to the crowd, you know, to 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 see, to enjoy, you know. And I think the players they enjoy playing by, but you know, being him the coach, you know, yeah, co co coaching them, you know. Hopefully, uh, he will stay a long time because then, if he's staying, I think. Celtic will won will win many trophies, but you know, in I think in maybe in one stage of of the career, even being coach and being in one team many years, maybe you want some some different uh, thing, you know, just to to compete in other league or something like that. But I think actually, if he leave now or in one year, it's just because of the reason that he have some offer that maybe I would say not. He cannot reject, but it's something that he's feeling that is the time to go, you know? Yeah. And I think, to be honest, and this is no disrespect to Tottenham, I think because of the situation that they're in with many players, perhaps not being good enough for the ownership, it's almost as if he'll be a boxer going into the ring with both of his hands tied behind his back. And maybe that's probably why staying at Celtic would be a probably, better option as well. Probably, probably. Yeah, I think they're not going through the best time, I think. Tottenham, yeah. even even they make a team to be in the first four, they didn't reach that. So I think in this moment, for him, it's better to don't go there. This is my opinion yeah. because maybe he will change. Maybe he will change the philosophy. Maybe he will be next year third, fourth, or second. I don't know. 
Yeah. Um, but I think he's feeling good in the Celtic and he will stay there. Of course. And just a sidestep, because I, I didn't have this in my, in my head, but you, you know, we're talking about Spurs. If you're Harry Kane right now, yeah. would, you, would you stay at Spurs? Uh, it's a difficult one because he also filled the club. He's, mm. you know, he's kind of a um, player from, you know, from that club, you know. The but academy, I, yeah. Yeah. honestly, he needs to change. If he wants to win something, I'm not saying offending anyone in any 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 supporter from from Tottenham because Tottenham, it's a big club, and uh, but. I think if he wants to win something in the way, not to win just the Premier League, to make also a good step for the Champions League, he, he needs to leave, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. And he, we... you know what was the thing about him also? For example, okay, Haaland this year, he scores, he scored 36 goals in the league. Yeah. But no one, always no, no one speak about Kane, but always he's, he's 25 plus. Yeah, I think he got 30 this season, if not 31, in, in that team as well. No one is talking about him. <laughs> no one is saying Kane scored 30. Even the, the, the year when Suarez scored 30-something, Kane was also close there. And no one was talking about him. Ah, Kane is there. I think maybe because also of also this, maybe because he's in, at Tottenham. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I remember... I remember Alan but, Shearer scored so many goals in his career, only ended up with one league title. And even though he says it was great that he ended up going back to Newcastle because as a club that he supported, yeah. I still think deep down, deep, deep down, he kind of regrets not going to, say, Manchester United. And if Harry Kane's got the opportunity to go to Manchester United, he's probably, probably got more chance to win something there. Probably, for sure. I think also, I don't know. Okay, the same thing with Totti, I think, in Roma. For sure, it, it deep in his, you know, because he, you know, that he rejects. There's a story when what he said also that he rejects Real Madrid and those yeah. clubs. With the with the all respect to Roma, you cannot compare Roma with Real Madrid mm. for Champions League uh, football, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's quickly go back to Celtic because we we've done quite a bit. We haven't even spoken about Ayl yet, but I, I wanted to ask you about Virgil Van Dijk. I know there's an ob obvious question here, but you know this guy has been absolutely sensational, uh, even at, at Celtic, at Southampton, at Liverpool. People were talking yeah. about him being one of the best Premier League defenders ever, but unfortunately, he got that injury against Everton. He doesn't seem to be the same player that he was. But what do you remember about Big Virgil? Well, uh, he's a guy that that you could see from the. Uh, now people with, will say, "Yeah, you 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 discover him." No, I didn't discover him. <laughs> but, but but you you could see from the from the beginning that he's a guy that. You know his style of playing. You know his his confidence. You know the th the how he was doing the things. You know. I swear. From the from my point of view, when you when I was sitting on the bench and watching the game, you, you probably would say, ah, he's playing forty percent of his his hundred, wow. maybe <laughs> the league the league wow. games. You know, like he was taking the ball and driving the ball as a as a as a defender from our eighteen yards to the to the other eighteen yards to from the other team. So it's like you know it. It was like kind of joke, you know. He was fast, strong, technically amazing. He was shooting free kicks. As a defender, when you're like this, come on. Okay, that injury against Everton. Bad luck, you know. Uh, also, I think the the tackle from from the keeper was he could he he could yeah, stop and not make that, you know. Guilty. Yeah, I think it was also not not nice. Maybe I understand he wanted to block the the shoot, but in the end, you know, it's. But yeah, he was a he was a beast at the Celtic. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And, and to be honest, he's he's gone on from strength to strength, and he's been a fantastic player. 
and he's still got years left in him. Yeah. Um, but but let, let's see how he goes next season. Let's see how he goes. But um, let, let's switch gears then. So you've um, what was it? Where did you go after Celtic? You went. You went to Hatafe, you went to... Yeah, yeah, I went back Vidi. to Spain, yeah. I went back to Spain, yeah. yeah. I went back to Spain to Primera. Yep. And, yeah, I was there, yeah. And, and honestly, okay, yeah, if you compare that time at Celtic, which probably, I would say, uh, alongside with the Wind Partizan, it's the biggest club. Yep. Uh, okay, many things, it's bigger than Partizan organization uh, you know and those things even you know it's everyone knows about the Lisbon Lions you know the the first uh, British course, uh, club yeah. winning so you know it's it's I'm going back again to Celtic but it's a huge club you know when you go out from the tunnel to the stadium to the pit sorry uh, you see on the walls uh, names of the fans you know uh, it's like uh, you go out, you you feel the the support from the people. By didn't work at the end. I mean, for me, it, it, it there, but yeah, I went back to Spain. Well, you, you had a spot Vidi in in Hungary, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. What, I won the title what, also there. Yeah, you wanted. Yeah, you wanted. To, was Henning Berg coaching out there at the time? No, he left. He was with Marco there. And then right. I came after. I came after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, my my friend David was at Honved. I think round about that time when they won the league with Marco Rossi was head coach. I can't remember which year it was though. Um, it was uh, the the year with the with the uh, Berg uh, coaching Vidi. Right. So it's twenty seventeen, twenty sixteen, something like that. Yeah, something, something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. But you you went to Poland. You played in Japan. Um, but then actually, in Poland, there was actually in Poland, there was really short time there because I, well, after just, yeah, I just get after three games, I think three, uh, three, four games, I get injured my knee. I had the ACL. Uh, yeah, one, I went, I went to jump to take the ball. Uh, it was like 15 minutes of the game, and he just kicked me from the from behind, you know, the defender. So uh, it was not by myself; it was by uh, by the opponent uh, tackle. So, but yeah, I actually I played thirty minutes after that because the physio went in and he said, "No, your knee is okay." <laughs> and I played another thirty minutes until the end of the first half, and then I just felt my knee blocked. And... That's reckless. Yeah, that is yeah. reckless. Yeah. My <laughs> God, yeah. Jesus! That's I didn't go out. I didn't go out. Yeah, yeah, I played. I played thirty minutes more after that. Yeah, Christ. <laughs> Oh God! All right, so you went to Malaga and ended up at Ayel. Uh, now this yeah, is where yeah. this is where it gets interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting because yeah. you know you mentioned your dad played for Abolon back in the day. Yeah. So I'm I'm guessing he told you all about the C Cypriot culture, what to expect, and I, I'm guessing it's a little bit different to what you were used to. <laughs> so <laughs> how did it happen? How did the move happen? Because you were at Malaga at the time, if I'm not yeah, I was at Malaga. I was at Malaga and I had really, let's say, really good time there. Uh, actually, they wanted me to stay. I was waiting uh, for them to send me a contract because uh, uh, the director he wanted me he wanted me so much there. But they bring a new coach, and he said like he wanted to wait a little bit, you know, because he was also looking for some kind of different style of striker, you know, or something like that. But I score was in Malaga. I was playing really good. For the time that I was there, I really I really did well. And then uh, Dusan Kerkes, he he contacted me with the with the director at the time, uh, Theodoros Antonio. Yep. They contacted me, they they called me and uh, in the beginning I said, okay, let's 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 see, you know. Let's think about about that. You know, uh, I was honest to them that uh, I had that from Malaga. That uh, with the respect to the to the club to Malaga, I'm giving them uh, advantage in the in them in the thing to wait for them a couple of days. You know, because I was still still player there of them uh, because I always respect the club where I play. You know, so 
I give them, you know, the the the, the chance to to speak firstly with me, and then I will see, you know. And then in one moment when I saw that with the with the with the with the thing with Malaga, they they were waiting too much. Um, then I started to speak with the with Alan. I mean, in the way to be more serious, you know, in the way of the terms and everything, you know, because. Uh, that was uh, that was the t the thing that we agree, you know, between us. We said, okay, we will wait a little bit. They wanted to wait for me a little bit to to finish with this Malaga, and yeah, at the end uh, we agree, uh, and I can say just uh, good things about about that in the in the first year. We didn't reach the playoff, which is the the main goal of the of the club. Uh, but individually, if I look, I had a really good season, you know, uh, scoring uh, all the goals in Europe for the club uh, that that we scored, all, all of them high scored. So, you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, yeah, it was a good start for me. I mean, uh, for the team also, and then one moment of the, of the season, we went down a little bit, all the, all the, all the team. But I finished, yeah, score, scoring 14 goals. So I think it was uh, individually, yes, but I always want, I'm, I always look at, at the team, you know, I want always success for the team. I'm not just selfish and looking at me, so that's yeah, of it. Course. Yeah. Of course, I, I remember the year before you joined, uh, Ael were challenging for the title. I think, if I remember correctly, they played Abolon with, I think, three games to go. And Vozinha made a big mistake, and Bissesua scored to make it two one. Yeah, he wanted to dribble. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. <laughs> look, I, I'm I'm not look. I've got nothing against Vozinha, but I just thought that if you want to win the league title, you need a goalkeeper that's got more presence, you know, and that that, that wouldn't make those those mistakes. Yeah. Now, when when you join the club, was there ambition to challenge for the title again, given? The year before, I know Maier had left by that time, the the striker. Yeah, um, and you'd come in. But what was their ambition that season? Yeah, it was the same one. They saw that the year before they were they were close to to win the title. Actually, I think four weeks or three weeks until the end of the season, they were challenging for the cup final and for the title, and they lose yes. both things. Yes, they lose both yes. things. Olympiacos, Olympiacos uh, put them out from the from the cup, and they lost San Rostos in the final. That's right. Yeah, Sorry. and then yep. uh, they lose the title on 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 that game. Yeah. So so, it was, so it was yes, a uh, difficult the, season. Difficult yeah, season. the ambition from the club was the was the same. They told me they want to to fight for the for the title for the cup. You know, but yeah. That that was the goal, but in the end, you know, football is it's a life it's a life thing. So you you don't know you never know what what can happen. You know. Yeah. There's something I don't think I've asked you. I'm not sure if I've asked you this. I'm sure I haven't. Because I've asked Marco about this. Marco scored a penalty against Ael the season before you joined. Yeah. And it was Vozinha in goal. And when he scored, he pointed to Vozinha because I think Vozinha was trying to distract him. Yeah. Did Vozinha ever talk to you about that? <laughs> no, no, honestly, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I saw that because I was following uh, Omonia uh, the year when they win the title because of Marco. So yeah. that was six months before I came, and I saw that I, I saw that that he made that <laughs> after the penalty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh God! There was I don't again. I don't know if I've spoken to you about this. I, I spoke to Marco about this when when Omonia we won the title. <laughs> they did the, the the celebrations on the pitch, and Marco is being interviewed by by the Cypriot TV channel, and Kiko is in the background going, "Speak Portuguese," <laughs> because Marco speaks a little bit of Portuguese, so they're just proper winding yeah, him up. Yeah, because it's similar to Spanish. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, M- Marco doesn't like the camera. I can tell he doesn't like the camera. He doesn't, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't like, like it. But um, so let, let's talk about the that Ireland season because he scored like 14 goals. He scored twice against Buffalo in the second game of the season. Yeah. One of them was a great uh, scissor kick. But for me, I prefer the, the goal that he scored when your back was to go and you turn the defender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top. When I shoot, yeah. yeah. When I shot on the on the first post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I enjoyed that. But in terms of that season, I know Kerkes didn't last the whole campaign if I'm not mistaken. He wasn't there the whole season, was he? No, he go- he went from the club in December, I think. It yeah. was December, I think, something like that, yeah. How did you feel when he left then? Because obviously he was the guy that brought you to the club. I'm sure you've had managers bring you in and, and then yeah. leave. But, you know, it's a back in the your career, kind of. You're moving to Cyprus. Big expectation, I presume. So to see him go, was it like, well, this is football? Or were you thinking... No, honestly, know. honestly, it was not easy. Uh mm. Of obviously, yeah, it's football. Obviously, it's football. But he's the kind of coach that he tries always to be close to the players and to be, I will not say friend with the players, but to be like, you know, like close to them that they can feel that they can talk to him about everything, not just about football, you know, about life, about everything. And I think I always say this. Uh, when you lose, when you have bad results in one moment of the league, obviously everyone have up and down, you know, in the during the season, you know. It's not the mistake of the coach only. It's a mistake also of us players, you know. It's not, of course, it's the most easy thing is to change a coach because he's one. And we are 25. You cannot change 25 players, you know. But I think sometimes also us as a players, I say us in like this because I'm a player, so so I'm saying that uh, that we are also in many 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 moments we are not also honest with us. Always we are, ah, but the pitch is bad. But I know, but even even though that the pitch is perfect, you will find always some excuse why the ball went like this. Or, no, when the when when the things are going good, okay, everyone it's. On the boat, you know, but when the things are going bad, we need to be honest, also sit and speak, you know, uh, see see ourselves at the mirror and say, listen, I think the things are not going good. Because me, I know when I'm doing mistakes. I know when I'm not good. You don't need to say to me when I'm not, when I'm good. Hey, everyone see, uh, see that, you know, but when I'm not good, when I'm not playing good, I'm the first one that he, I need to think about it and say, okay, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I need to be, I don't know, uh, more concentrate or be more aggressive or be this or be... And sometimes I think we are also about the, about these things. We need to, you know, like, we always find some excuses, you know, no, but the, uh, the pitch is not uh, watered, you know, there is no water on the pitch. But yeah, but for the other team also, there is no water on the pitch. It's not just yeah. for us, you know. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you, you were one of the most experienced players in the squad. And when I look at that squad, that that um, that I had season, I didn't see too many leaders. And this isn't to disrespect your former teammates. Naturally, there are a lot of leaders in that squad, but not as many as you would hope to push you guys to the to the next level. Am, am I right in saying that? I don't want to put you on the spot, but am, am I on the right lines, kind of? I understand what you want to say. Yeah, this we're going back again to the thing that I told you. We had the, my first season in Isle. We had one, two, three, three Serbian, two Macedonians, and one Croatian. Yeah. So six, six ex-Yugoslavians or Balkan players, let's say like that. Then we had. Two Spanish, uh, two Brazilians, one Portuguese, yeah. one Argentinian, Shout two Argentinians. Uh, kind of, let's say, which is normal in football. Every team has some groups of five, six, seven players that they're better between them. Yeah, you make more connection because you speak the same language, you know, and those things. This is completely understandable, but. What, what the thing is, when you go out on the pitch, the thing is that we need to be one. And, you know, what I always say, it's like, 
uh, let's say how to explain this. Uh, the ego of the players sometimes is too big. Right. For example, I don't know, we are losing 1 0 at the half time, let's say. And maybe uh, I go to the dressing room and and I start to, to speak about, come on, guys, let's go. We need to, to do better the second half, you know. And always there are some players that they feel that someone is attacking them. Right. And uh, if, you, if you want to improve, if you want to win something, if you want to do something, the ego must go on the, on the side. Because yeah. in sport... Everyone have big ego because everyone think that every that he's I'm right. No, the other is right. No, I'm right again. No, you're. It's not about that. And being captain, captain of the team, for example, doesn't that doesn't mean that you're a leader of the team. I mean, how many captains? I don't know. Are Harry are, Maguire? They're, <laughs> yeah, they're Sorry, just Harry. no. They, they they just wear the band. And when they, let's say, scream or yell at someone on the pitch, you don't get, you don't get scared about that. You don't yeah. react on that. You, the, what you say, the leader is something different. The leader is that, you know, when the team believes in you, when the team is, ah, we have the leader on the, but not only one, we have five leaders yeah. on the pitch. And we're going to fight until the end. We're going to make it. And to win something, to win cups, leagues, you must have in the team people that already win something and that they know what is the feeling about that. Scott Brown, is that one? Is that a captain? Uh, it's fucking <laughs> amazing. <laughs> he's, he's crazy, man. He's crazy. But in the good way. I'm not saying... I'm not yeah. saying... I'm not of saying on the bad way, he's he's a legend. He's a legend. He's yeah. he's not a leader. He's other level. So to, talking back to uh, your season at IL, um, and I understand what you're saying about the. I wouldn't say the cliques. I wouldn't say there were there were cliques in the club, even though you got dish, different nationalities and everything. But do you think that things may have been easier if there was more? more positive influence from the people making the decisions at the top? Because look, it's it's obvious that the club is in, it has got problems at the moment. Um, and I don't know if you were, I don't know, you noticed anything around the club at the time when you were there from the top. I know Sofoglio is loved by the fans, most of them anyway. Um, but were there any influences outside of the, the team that made things a little bit difficult? I mean, you don't have to mention any names. I don't, I don't expect you to, but... Listen, I think, as I told, as I said before, everyone makes mistakes. Mm. But even, you know, we spoke about that uh, many times. Uh, I think it's, if you want to improve as a club, not only I, I think, doesn't matter the name of the club. Ammonia. <laughs> Every, everyone yeah. needs to improve. You know what I mean? Uh, you need to make the steps forward. You cannot be on the time, let's say, 20 years ago or 15, 20, 25 years ago. Uh, I'm good. No, I'm good. I'm, I'm happy. Uh, everything will be okay. No, it will not be okay. You know, you want to win something. You need to make a step forward. Again, step forward. Step forward until you don't reach that. There are examples in Cyprus that they are nice also. People making good things. I'm not saying that in Al they're not good, making good things, but fans, amazing. When you play in front of them after the game, <laughs> They they sing they they support you they they are there for you the you know, unbelievable. But it's not only fans. You cannot. Yeah. We are talking about fans. Look, you are asking me. I saying uh, the fans are amazing. You know what I mean? Like, come on. The fans are expecting also some things. They cannot. Ah, uh, oh, yeah, we won the title uh, eleven years ago, last time. 
you know, it's you need to change something. You need to go forward. You need to. Yeah. The things are, are which which many. which I expect to happen because I want to happen in IL. I want that to happen because I think the people who love the club, people behind supporting, they deserve this. Yeah, but things it doesn't seem that there's one problem that needs to be fixed. It seems to be many, many problems that need to be fixed or, or even fine-tuned. You know, if you look at the summer gone, the signings that were made by by IL, you know, Thussel, the guy that I host the show with, he, he thought that you guys were going to win the league purely on the basis that you guys made some fantastic signings. You know, Kevin Morales, Berahino, uh, Muriel, the goalkeeper. And I know that you weren't there for the whole season. I think it was it February or, or January that you'd left the yeah, club yeah, by then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, end of January, just, yeah. 31st of January, it, yeah. It, it just went wrong from the off. I mean, there was, you know, uh, Bebe was the technical director. There was um, Silas as head coach who played for the club, that knows about the club, the DNA of the club. And they lasted, what, four games, five games, if that? Yeah, but, you know, I don't know. Uh, it's, 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 it's a good question also because, you know, uh, how to say it's for me the mistake was making so big change in the squad. I mean the squad when you when you, I say big change, you I think they bring they brought uh, seventeen new players or something like that. Yeah, it's pretty normal for Cyprus though. <laughs> yeah, but it's so but I know what you mean. I don't, but I know it's so you difficult, mean. you know. It's. Yeah. If I'm the coach and you bring me 17 new players, how do you think that in one preseason I can make a good connection with the players, between the players on the field? It's not easy. You know what I mean? Of course, it was a mistake uh, bringing them that much of, of amount of players. I think we didn't have a good season the year before. I mean, in the way that we went up in the playout. Then in the playout we we lose only one game and we won the, the all the others, which was not the the this year was not was not the same. Okay, reach the final and lose at the end in the cup, but yeah. But if you want to make something, you cannot change that much players. This is my opinion. What, what I think it's it's just too much, you know. We had already some players. Okay, you want to keep. For example, I don't say I don't know. You want to keep fourteen players? You have three, four from the academy. Okay, you can bring seven, eight players. But seventeen? How much? We, I think we brought seventeen or something like that. Yeah, I think it's. I'm not saying nothing against the players. Eh? There are some very, really good players, but for the coach and for us that they came and for them to make a connection on the field, it's not easy. And, and you know, I think it also has a lot to do with the players that left as well, because Torres had gone, Riera yeah. had gone, and they were experienced players. But then Euler, when you see also, someone, Euler also. Euler, yeah, that's right. That's right. But then when you see someone of the experience of Kevin Morales, and you know what, for him to go to Cyprus, that, that name, you know, it, it, it did speak volumes of the ambition of Ael, because yeah. to get someone like Kevin Morales with his CV, come on, you've done something right. But at the same time, unfortunately, Kevin has has been injured a lot of the time this season. He's been he's been struggling with injuries, and I saw him in the cup final, and he he didn't he didn't look right. We knew that he was going to be on the bench and he was going to get half an hour, but something didn't seem right with with his fitness, and I just think that. You know, you need to have players like that in the squad. Don't get me wrong for the experience and everything. But at the same time, if he's not on the pitch, how much can he contribute to? And I think it's it's going to be unfair that people are going to start saying, oh, well, he was just a tourist. He only came for the holiday because he's not that no. kind of player at all. No, I think in the way that what you said, it's, it's true. I think in the end, and when you get certain age, like when you're an experienced player, you know sometimes that, okay, maybe you cannot play every three, four days game, you know, because your body needs recovery longer than when you were 20, you know. But also the clubs and people 
because they look just the statistic how he played or something like that but sometimes those kind of players they bring something different you know out of the pitch in the dressing room experience maybe talk to, to speak to the young to the young players help them you know so yeah i think it would be not it would be unfair to from the people if they start to speak yeah he was a tourist i think not he just had uh, injuries he was struggling maybe with some uh, some injuries muscle injuries but i think mistakes were some something else not that Cool. Okay. Well, I know we've gone on for over an hour and um, I really appreciate your time, bro. I I'm not going to uh, take too much more of your time. No. Nice. You very... <laughs> Cheers. I've got a few quick questions. In terms of uh, the Cypriot League as a whole, your time there, were there any particular players that stood out that were either Cypriot or, or foreign nationals? I know it's easy for me to, to ask about these questions. But obviously, Jairo has been brilliant this season, but were there any players that surprised you? Listen, I would not like to, to mention one, two, three, four, five names, you know. I think, honestly, I can speak a little bit about the league, what I found when I when I came there. And I think from players coming in, if they take the league by, ah, I will play easy, they will struggle. Because the league is not easy, actually. Okay. Maybe the first impression when someone doesn't know about Cyprus, uh, it's an island, nice weather, beaches, the sea, it's everywhere, you know, water is everywhere, which is true. But if you don't come and from the first moment your mind is ready, your brain is ready to fight, to make the same thing, doesn't matter playing in England, Cyprus, Spain, Italy, or, does, or I don't know, Bundesliga, Germany, you will struggle because this football now is different. If you are physically not ready, if even, if, even though you are the best in the world, you will struggle. So I think actually the league is really competitive. It's equal. You can see by the you know, one-year champion, it's, this year was, was Aris. Uh, last season... Uh, um, was a Apollo uh, season before was Ammonia, so you know clubs they have many foreigner players. All of them actually, I think, they spend the quote for for foreigner players. So I think the league is really equal and 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 good, strong. It's not uh, you cannot predict the, the the who will win, who will you know. In other leagues, you can say maybe ah, this the the first four will be this this this, but in Cyprus, always you have some surprise. You know, I've spoken to Jordi Gomez, who's won the FA Cup. He's played you know some big games. Matt Derbyshire again played top level football. Manu Garcia played in La Liga. Yourself played in top level football. Every player that I, Jason Punchin, who is, is likely yeah. to get a head coach job at, at Bayer. So all you guys have said that the Cypriot League is harder than what people think. But what is it that makes it so hard? Because I, I, I watch it myself. Obviously, as you know, I watch it regularly. And there are some players I see that I'm thinking, my God, you could be, be doing so much better at a different league. But then again, I see the, the stamina levels and the energy levels. And you've seen it translated from European football. Like, so, for example, Ajax and Omonia, they play Europa League or Conference League and they come back to the, the domestic league and they're so tired from their exploits in Europe that their form dips. But what is it about this league that makes it so challenging? Okay, probably when they play European games, the, the, the tempo of the game is higher, which is normal yeah. because you're playing... Uh teams from uh, top five leagues, you know, and obviously the tempo of the game will be faster. This is normal, you know. It's the same thing when Serbian teams play in Europe, you know, so it's... Uh, I don't know how to say it, to explain. I think the thing is that there are always six, seven, eight clubs competing wanted to make something, you know what I mean? Wanted to be in the top six, uh, uh, challenging for the title. Okay, in the end, there is only one. Uh, the only one can win the, the title, you know, but I would say that 
that thing that all the clubs they have many foreigner players i think they're bringing quality to the league i would not say that the Cypriot players they're not good not they are good there are many there are many good players but also i would say that the mentality of them they need to change also the mentality the Cypriot players they feel comfortable because they know their home uh, good life um their families are there they don't have this how we say uh we say you need to be hungry to success yeah the motivation yeah, yeah. you know if you're not hungry yeah. uh not just in football if you're not hungry to success in something you will struggle and i think actually cypriot football they have talented players they have good players but also they need to change here 100%. and this is not easy some you need to start from the beginning you need to change this from the from the youth you know yeah. but i would say that uh, th this th these are the the things that i found uh, found uh, really interesting when I, the time that i spent there great stuff well i've got one more question to ask you right and this yeah. is where we're gonna have we have a bit of fun with this one okay now yeah. think of your think of your teammates at IL the time that you were there. Okay. Yeah. And picture this scene. You are gonna arrange a birthday party for someone, right? Yeah. And you need your teammates to help you. Okay. okay. First of all, which player is gonna buy the cake? Who do you trust to buy the cake? To buy the cake. Uh, uh from the both seasons. Yeah. Uh, probably would be, I would say, uh, Medo or Davor, maybe Medo okay. or Davor, yeah, okay, or Wait. one of them. Any any reason? No, I was close to them, and I probably maybe also Medo is because I know him like 20 years, maybe right. even more. Okay, so if if you wanted to have like someone to do the entertainment, like I don't know, play an instrument. Who, who who would you choose, or even tell oh. jokes? Oh, I think to play instrument, I don't think so. That's how one to play. <laughs> Maybe the triangle. <laughs> yeah, probably some of the I don't know, maybe South American guys. But also Kevin was he was funny. Also he knows to make jokes. So right, yeah. I'm guessing you got it from Everton, the Scouse humor. Maybe that's what yeah, you got it from. yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> North <Okay>. England man. <laughs> North, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, so we've done the cake, we've done the entertainment, right? But what okay. about what about to decide what party games to play? Because I, I don't know about in in Serbia, but in, especially in Cyprus. When it comes to kids, sometimes they have the piñatas or they have the yeah. game pass the parcel. Who, who's going to arrange the game at this at this party? Poof. Who do you trust? <laughs> it could be to a made the party. game. To made the games could, on the could, on the yeah. yeah. To made the games on the on the on the birthday party. Yeah. It could be a kids party. You never know. You don't want to yeah. be playing rude games. <laughs> if you if you ask me uh, to choose the place and to reserve the place. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I would say Dower because he is six years there. He knows everyone in Limassol. Uh, uh, I would Davor, say to, I, I, I would say, I, I would say it's him because he he knows everyone and he will arrange really easy and really fast. But <laughs> like, yeah, like he, I don't know. Davor is like James Bond. He knows everyone. <laughs> no, he knows. He knows people there. He's I think he's sixth season there. So. Uh, yeah, if if you need something, you call him. It's okay, and he 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 arranges. <laughs> uh, he's, he's, like, he's more like Raymond Reddington from the Blacklist, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but for this, I'm not. I'm not sure, man. I don't know. You've never been asked this question. Maybe before, no. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. But uh, maybe to some keeper because the keepers they're always you know. From the other, from different world, you know. So maybe some right. keeper. Okay. Now, maybe this, some this goalkeeper, is, yeah. This because is normally, question. normally, you know, the keepers normally, we can, you know, we don't have a. Let's say when you're a keeper, you have a 16 meters. You cannot go out from there. So you know, it's like. 
So they're, they're, they're close, you know, there. So. <laughs> Oh, they're the only players that they, they cannot go out from some some part of the pitch. So, it's... <laughs> so you can't you can't go out of the house either. Okay. Nah, but they, we, we joke we joke always with them like this. So it's okay. <laughs> okay. Well, th there's there's one why I have to ask about this one. Okay. And I've got a friend like this. We call them the liability. Do you know what I mean? You can't take them anywhere. You might be in a in a bar just talking, and then he might spill the drinks. Or he'll just oh, go. Oh yeah, 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 I hate that. Yeah, I don't like who's, that. Man. Who's the one player that you can't take to the bars or the clubs? Probably or... I would be the first one taking him home and putting out from the club. Man. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> Uh, did, then, did then, any... then, then, then go. Then don't don't go to drink if you don't know to drink, man. That, you know, like... <laughs> well, is, is there is there any players that were like that? At at all for? Wait, do, do you know what? Just to be fair, I'm I'm gonna say I. You can say any team. Oh any yeah, team. I have I have one man. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Pro, uh, one maybe one. Yeah, maybe not one, but probably maybe more. I don't know. It wasn't a Celtic play, was it? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. In Celtic, that's normal. It's okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know better than me how it's in in Britain. So it's okay. Yeah. I, as Jose Mourinho says, if I speak, I'll be in big trouble. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I'm not I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Well, I tell you what, Prate, thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate uh, it. You know, you've you've been brilliant. You know, and. To be honest, man, like I've got so many more questions, but we, we can go on for days and you need to sleep. You you know, you, you've been bored it's okay. of me. We, we have time, you we have time, but it's okay. We we, we we have time to make more, so it's okay. I'm open to, of to speaking to Yeah, for sure. To, for to sure. And, you, uh, and and hopefully next season we could do like more review shows as well, because obviously you know your football and it'd be great to hear yeah. your hear your opinion on things. I just um you know, have you got a message for the IL fans that you you, you want to tell them? Because I know you did that great video for the cup final. But have you got any any messages you want to give them? No, uh, uh, I, I I would like to say yeah, to be always behind the team like like they they've been uh, through all the years and uh, the seasons that 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 I was there. So the the two almost two seasons that I, that I was there. I think uh, they're the really treasure of the club. I think without them, uh, would be different. I think every every club with the fans behind it, it's something different. Not not just hell, but yeah, especially to them. I will I would I would like to to give um, to say also be thanked th thanks to, for for the support that that uh, they give to the team to me when I was there. So hopefully in the next years. Starting from the next one, the things will change and uh, the club can fight for uh, what they deserve. That's absolutely beautiful. And I'm sure that they will appreciate your kind words, uh, Stefan. Really appreciate it. So, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you again to our sponsor, Project 357. And we will be back very, very soon because even though the Cypriot season is over, we're non-stop. It's that simple.